Morning, gang. It is November 30th of 2016. I uh, believe in my previous uh, video I did on my Suburban, I said 2017 for some reason. I don't know why. But no, I'm not a time traveler. Um, I know a viewer noticed that and pointed it out to me. And so I just want to make sure I say 2016. But uh, today I'm doing a video on this, a uh, 1992 Ford F-150. Now, I had done some previous work on this. Uh, I think I did some videos on replacing the front brakes. I had also replaced the wheel cylinders. And the owner wants me to change the brake booster. They were told it was bad, and so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go through the steps um, to change that brake booster, and let me show you how I'm going to do it. Okay, so the goal for me is to not disconnect the master cylinder from the brake lines. There's no reason to. Um, the master cylinder is working fine, so I'm going to leave the lines connected. But I'm going to remove the two nuts here. They're 14 millimeter, and I will remove those. And I'll have to manipulate the master cylinder slightly away from the booster and kind of get it a little to the side and out of the way. I don't want to bend the lines uh, very much, but they will, you know, move some. They have some room there for movement. And also, I pulled the uh, check valve out of the booster itself and I'm going to set it aside. Now of course I will take this one off of the end of the hose whenever I install the new booster. So let me get the master cylinder out of the way and then I'll go to the next part. Okay there are actually three nuts that hold the master cylinder on. There is one on the uh, outboard side and then there were two on the inboard and the reason for that was there was one that actually holds the uh, master cylinder to the booster and then this little bracket here which holds the lines there was a second nut on top of that so with those two or all the nuts out of the way you can see the master cylinder moves quite easily and sets to the side you can also see there's a lot of corrosion in this one so that may, yeah, may or may not affect it but it may also uh, mean there's more internal problems. So at this point, I'm going to move to the inside. Now let me show you what I've got in here. We had this panel, this little padding, sound padding panel. I pulled that down. If you look up, you'll see that's the back side of the booster. There are four bolts on the wall, on the firewall, and those are also 14 millimeter. And then, it's hard to see, but there's a little clip that goes into uh, the post that holds the uh, arm together. So I'm just going to grab that. There's a little clip. Grab that. A little clip comes off, and that'll allow me to slide. <clears throat> She'll allow me. To, there it is. Slide the arm right off, and with that, you've got your brake light switch. So you have to make sure that goes back on in the same sequence. And then there was a washer on the outside of that. So that, you can see that has a slot and that slips over that uh, post while it's around the arm or the uh, rod coming from the booster. And then this is on the outside of that. Hope that makes sense, but it's kind of hard to show you any other way. Um, at this point, I'm going to pull those four bolts or four nuts off of the post and the booster should pull right out. Okay, I removed all the uh, nuts from the inside. So now I'm just gonna work the booster off the firewall. Pull it forward. Get it around a couple things, and that's it. So now I'll work the new one back into the same hole install the nuts on the back side just like this one had and reattach the arm. If you'll notice that arm is pointed up. So that's how I'm gonna I'm gonna duplicate that because the arm can turn. So that's how it came out, that's how I'm gonna put it back in.
Okay, so I have the booster in place. And hopefully you can see the nuts are installed. And I want to show you a, th a couple things. One, you know, this uh, brake switch, the open end, you can see it's got a little bit of a horseshoe of an open end there. That goes to the inside of the truck, towards the center. Um, this little black bushing, it has to go into the arm that came with the booster, into the end the loop. You can't put that on the post first, it won't work. Put this in the arm, and then when you slip the arm over the post on the brake pedal, you also move uh, the brake switch on at the same time. Because that arm, it's, it's a, if you put this on the post of the brake pedal first, it won't work. This will get in the way and it'll fight it. I know it's hard to see, but trust me on that. Put this on into the, po into the loop first and then slide it over the post. Once you get that in place, then you put this little white bushing on the end of it and then reinstall your little clip right there. Hope that makes sense. And there's everything back in place. So now, I'm going to go back to the outside and remove that paperwork where the master cylinder sits. Get that out of the way. That'll come off too. And then um, I'll reinstall the master cylinder. Make sure that cable comes out of the way. And again, I'll install the two nuts first that hold the master cylinder on. And then reinstall that little clip on top of the post. And install the third nut. So that'll take care of that. Okay, the last thing I did was release this little clamp here. Just use some pliers, squeeze that together, slide it down, and then I pulled it, pulled the old check valve off because you have to use the one that comes with the booster. Um, pulled that off the hose, then slipped a new hose onto this boot, onto this check valve, and reinstalled the clamp. Well, that job wasn't so bad. I hope you got some information out of it you can use. And if you need to change your booster, that's a Fairly easy one to change compared to some that I've done before. So, um, once again, thanks for watching.